Welcome to Haxby Shed. In this video I'm making some improvements to my pillar drill press in preparation for an upcoming project. But what started out as one job turned into five. I'm going to have to do some milling on this pillar drill drill press. I don't have a milling machine, I chose not to have one. I can manage to do most things that I need to do. But for a project coming up I will need to do some milling on this. The problem with it is, well, it doesn't have an X, Y, Z, Z table. Um, but also, although this is big and it's heavy, it's not very well secured to the pillar. It's mainly there from its own weight and it has a kind of set screw at the side here. I've never had it swivel when I didn't want it to swivel. Um, but even so, if I'm trying to do any end milling uh, on the side of a piece of material, this could move. It also is inclined to wobble a bit, actually. It's a bit springy on its own base, even though it's fastened to the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of struts on this, one anyway, maybe two, um, from around here somewhere, back to the wall. So to start with, I'll get the pulleys off, get this case top off, I found a couple of uh, fixing screws here on this casting, which I think I can get to without having to drill and tap anything. I've already loosened off this securing ring and I should be able to pull this pulley straight off now. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, it's on a taper. Took a bit of coming off with a puller, big puller, came off on the taper. Just four screws holding this on. The hole at the back's big enough to go over the motor pulley. Some rubber washers here. Mm, I'll show you inside. So these are the two screw positions I'm planning to use. They're actually at the moment clamping earthing cables but uh, I can double purpose them. This is where the jockey pulley goes, the intermediate pulley. And this stuff here is about moving the motor backwards and forwards to tighten the belts as you change the speed positions using this handle over here. So it's a cam type of arrangement. And then we've got this here for the main spindle quill. It's quite nice actually. You know, just looking at this, this cable that goes to the motor is too short. If I move the motor back now, try my best, this is just like a banjo string. And also, look at this earth connection here, it's too tight. It's the cable that's the shortest and under the most tension and that could snap off as easy as anything. So what does that mean? That means I need to put a new cable on here. Why is it one job becomes another job <laughs> becomes another job? Actually I've reconsidered this cable. With these two belts on this motor doesn't go as far back as I thought and it's not really that tight. So I'm going to sort the earths out. Start there. I've soldered the two earth leads together, one coming from the socket, the other one going to the motor. And then I've soldered on this flying lead. And this flying lead will go to the case. Now, even if this flying lead comes loose, there's still a through earth connection directly between the socket and the motor. So that gives us two layers of protection in a way. Right, you can see the earth clamp fitted there. And I've scraped the paint off to give a good connection, but I will test it. And now it leaves these two clear for me to put my braces into. I'm using 22 millimeter copper tube for my braces. Well, it's coming along. We'll get this fixed into the wall and see how rigid it is then. You know, that's quite difficult to do. Where is it? <laughs> Well, 
Well, that's fixed. And if I push this way into this corner, it's solid. But if I push the other way from this side, it still wobbles. Now, it wasn't really the wobbling I was trying to fix. It was to make sure this head was fixed in one position and wouldn't rotate if I was trying to side mill on here. But I'll still put the second brace on, I think. Another dawn, another day. I've realised that this bit of copper here between the screw and this edge could easily pull away from the wall. So I'm going to put a reinforcing plate on it. And this is a piece of heavy duty joist strap. And it's a really cheap source of uh, useful metal for all sorts of things really. Especially things like this. That'll go on there and then when that's done we'll do the other side. That's going to be fine for this. People say it's great to see this lovely old brick, but if you've got an old property, well, you'd understand that it comes with a set of problems. These bricks are really poor. They're called clamp bricks, and they're literally made in a clamp, which is um, an outside kiln, um, maybe even made in a field near a clay pit. And they put all sorts of rubbish in these bricks, so it's not kind of pure clay. And these dark patches you can see here uh, where they've mixed fuel in. So it can be bits of coal, uh, paraffin, all sorts of stuff mixed in uh, to help the bricks to fire. But it means they're really weak and you can drill into them and they just like disintegrate. They're not very waterproof, they're not regular. And here I think this is cement mortar, but actually in the other parts of uh, my property we've got lime mortar, which I think means it's before about 1850 when I think uh, cement mortar was introduced first. And lime mortar is not much more than a paste, so when it's damp, the brick's not very well anchored. Uh, the great thing is that if your property is um, settling, which the old properties do, the bricks with lime mortar just slide over each other. You don't get the cracking, whereas cement mortar tends to lead to the cracking. So, you know, there are pros and cons. It looks nice, but it comes with a fair bit of maintenance. So they're both on and they're both level and I've bent the edges down here to make it a bit more secure. Whilst we're talking about the building, this wall to my right is about three inches out of plumb, leaning outwards. At some point there'd been a roof on here which was collapsing and pushing the wall out. I think this roof was fitted in about the 1970s. I put the white board on to improve the light. The joists above that are absolutely fine. But you can see that I've put on a 16 mm threaded bar as a tie rod going right across. And that fixes into some wooden blocks on the outside of the building at each side. So I think this is going to be fine for many years to come. It just looks a bit scary when you see it. What did I say? One job turns into three jobs. This pulley is clunking as it goes round. I don't think it's the motor bearings. I think it's just... The pulley is a bit worn on the shaft. Perhaps it's been running a bit loose. Anyway, it's got to come off. Well, you can see the keyway in the pulley and on the shaft, but there's no key. And that grub screw on the end of the Allen key there doesn't actually fit in that slot on the motor shaft. So it's deformed it, and that's why we were getting that clunking, because the pulley doesn't sit right. So now I need to find a key. Well, it just gets better. That is a 5mm keyway, but the motor has a 3 16 keyway, which is 4.76. I'll order up some 5mm key steel and then make it fit the motor. The key steel has arrived, 5mm square, but I just need to machine something off this edge here between my two fingers at the front there just so that it fits the keyway on the motor shaft, which is 3 16 So about a quarter of a millimetre to come off. And I'll do that on the shaper. Have you ever had one of those days? I was just getting the shaper stroke set up to trim that key, and the socket dropped off the end of my wrench, and I think it's dropped inside the body of the shaper. 
I've tried looking everywhere, can't find it. I think the ram's got to come off. Well, I've seen it. It's tucked right in the back corner. Right, need a magnet on a stick. Come on. There we are, look. Uh. Just taking this steady. Right, I think that'll do it. Well, that fits in there perfectly. I just need to sort out that bit where the shaft was damaged, just below the key. Just because some lazy person put it together without the key and then the grub screw forced its way into the keyway. This pulley has a 5 8 bore and a 5 millimeter key. I mean, is that normal? Just cleaning out the rubbish on the inside, trying to get it on the motor shaft. Right, all back together. It's set to top speed. I have run it. It's a lot quieter. But there's a problem with the switch. Let me show you, see if it does it again. Crazy. This was going to be two minutes to finish this video. I've never had a problem with this switch before and all I've done is join two earth wires together. Otherwise I've not touched it. So one job becomes four. I've pulled out the relay and I don't see any problems with it at all but now it's not doing it. There weren't any wires touching anywhere. Can't understand it. Let's try. Don't get it. Bit worrying. Well, I found it. You couldn't make this up, quite honestly. You see this switch block here and the bare contacts on the back. By the way, I have turned this off. And there's the relay with the bare contacts. There's nothing between this relay and this switch block. If that red wire there, that anything on that red contact there, touches that white pole, the one with the white wire on the relay, it'll just keep going. So what's happened is I've jiggled about with the wires inside. It's pushed the relay forward and with vibration, that contact was touching this. You couldn't make it up, could you? Who makes a switch like that? Safety switch. All right, so I need to insulate this off before I put this back together. Now with plastic insulator made from brown drain pipe. That can go in there. And then these wires have to push down the side for this to fit. But the back of this switch block will hold that in place. I can't find a brand name on it, but I just can't imagine how anybody could design a switch like that. When this drills on top speed and then I switch it off, just as it slows down to stop, I get a funny kind of chattering vibration. So I've investigated a bit and it might be this bottom bearing in the motor. Probably needs a bit of lubrication. I've managed to oil the top one. So we'll just take this cap off and just see what we can see. Just a press on cap look. Well, one job became five, but the whole thing's a lot quieter now.
we don't have the problem with the uh, unreliable switch anymore. My goodness. We get a bit of noise between the spline and the pulley, but that's unavoidable. And the whole thing's a lot more rigid now with these two braces on. So I can do the job that I need to do, which I'll tell you about now. In an upcoming project, I need to machine a semicircle on the end of this black plate here. So what I'm planning to do is to put it on a rotary table on this platform with an end mill, jiggle this around to get it in the right place, and then hopefully I'll take the excess off with a hacksaw, but do the finishing like this. Well, I hope this has been useful to you. Thanks for watching Hacks Be Shared. Just a 30 second post script. I think this relay is actually rectangular and I'm going to flick it round the other way and it will give me a bit more space in the back of the switch. Yes, yes it is. Look, you can see it's rectangular. I'll just switch it round. Flip round the other way, there's a lot more space in there. It should have been like that to start with. I didn't change it. I've put that insulating plate back on. And now the back goes on properly. Done.